Hi and welcome back to Chops Garage. It is time to give you a little update on things and one of the things I know you most like updates on is warranty claims because everyone in the videos online likes to talk about selling cars, how much they made per car. Not many people, with the exception of a few, like to talk about the realities of warranty claims and how much money you need to spend after the cars have gone out. As I always say in my videos, as a car dealer, you truly don't know how much money you made a car on a car until the warranty period or the six month consumer law has passed. I mentioned in an earlier video some of the claims that were going through and I've got the outcomes of those now. And it's always interesting when you guys get in the comments and see whether you think I've treated the customers fairly, whether you think the warranty claim in itself was fair based on the age and the mileage of the vehicle. And um, yeah, just to get in your general feedback. Because the comments you always get when you put any videos out online on TikTok is that warranties aren't worth the paper they're written on. As I mentioned in previous videos, I do a mix of third party warranties if the car's further away and if the car's local, I do my own warranty documentation. I think a lot of people misunderstand when I comment about people making claims of stuff that we think perhaps shouldn't be covered that I don't give any documentation out. But in both cases, both types of warranty get a full printed warranty document with um, all of the terms on it for what we cover and what we don't cover. But as we know, that doesn't mean that someone's just gonna look that over and go, oh, it's not covered by that policy, I won't make a claim, because if they think they can get someone else to pay for a, a problem on the car, of course they're gonna do it, and you can really blame them for giving it a go, really. So as I go along, I'll try and insert pictures of the car, so those of you who watch the channel regularly can remind yourself of what vehicle I'm talking about. So first up, Skoda Yeti. So that Yeti was 2017, with 127,000 miles on, but a full service history. We sold it to a friend of a subscriber who recommended me, so massive thanks for that. And he recommended me on the basis that he said I'd look after the lady. Well, unfortunately, on the way home, if you remember, it popped an ABS sensor. We booked it in with tire and wheel services at Tavistock, which are a cracking company. I used them before. They help me out if there's people down the end. Got the invoice here for the repair on that. £99.80 for... Uh, plugging in and replacing the wheel sensor didn't seem an unreasonable bill at all unfortunately about a week or so later i think now that the mileage there is 128 so they've done about a thousand miles uh, maybe a bit less i can't remember the exact mileage when left but around about a thousand miles since the abs sensor so it can't have been on the way home can it, it must have been a bit later she might have carried i think she might have carried on driving it with the abs sensor a light on obviously so yeah um not long after, about a week or so again, she had got in touch again and said, James, I've had another problem. I've had a um, warning light come up on the dashboard and I keep having to top up the cooldown on it. Now, I thought EGR. Um, she booked in again with the guys at Tavistock and they diagnosed a bad radiator, a leak on the radiator. We just had the bill in for that one and that one was... Do, 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 368 pounds now we'll get the vat back so it's 307 pounds actually and that one is uh, 83 pounds when i get the vat back off of them so they replaced the radiator and replaced the antifreeze the car at that point done 130,000 miles so it's done um at least a couple of thousand miles since it's left me but we are still i think only about a month or so into it and i gave a three month warranty on that as well so already we have spent um what have we spent? We've spent three hundred and eighty or pounds, three hundred and ninety pounds on the car since it left us, and there's still a couple of months left on the warranty. And obviously, under the Consumer Rights Act, there's anywhere up to six months the customer could claim on it. So we could be in for some more bills on that car. Now, obviously, it is it may be a 2017, which is fairly new for me, but it's done 127,000 miles. So that one could, you know, I don't view either of those things—an ABS sensor or a radiator. Um, at that kind of mileage and that kind of age to be things that make it a bad car I don't think it was poor prep as well because obviously it wasn't leaking when it left us it took a, a thousand miles or more, more before it started leaking so um, you can't inspect every every inch of the radiator before the car goes out so that's just failed during normal normal use and you, I would consider that basically fair wear and tear for a vehicle that age but I do cover those things with my warranty would a third party warranty she had my warranty would a third party warranty cover it I don't know if they would on that mileage and that age whether they would cover a radiator or not because again you've got to understand that probably is fair wear and tear um probably cover the abs sensor but it's fair to say that once the car starts to get around about 10 years old 
and it's on that kind of mileage that it might need a radiator you know they are only steel and a lot of the parts and they do get water and stuff banging up against them in the front of the car they rot out i say it doesn't make it a bad car but let me know your thoughts down below now obviously this is the point i make here again is if you're going to have a dealer that's going to sort of do those repairs without question then you can't come and try and knock 500 quid off the car when they buy it off you i can't remember if i gave a discount on that car or not but in reality my viewpoint is that if i am going to do those kind of repairs without question on cars of that age and that mileage that the asking price needs to be paid because if you start trying to knock can you imagine knocking trying to knock 500 pound off that car 300 pound off that car that's money that can't go towards repairs like that and at the end of the day you might go well a dealer needs to build that into his margin this that and the other <laughs> at the end of the day you can't you're not gonna be able to go to dealerships and buy cars from dealerships with warranties if you want them to make no money off the cars they just simply aren't going to exist people aren't going to run them as a business so next one up, um, we've got another invoice here for another radiator. It was a 2009 Vitara. Hopefully I've got the image on the screen now. We sold to a lady. It's the one I did the repair on the wheel arch. When they came and saw it, it had some bubbling on the wheel arch and they wanted me to do the paint on that for them. Gave everything machine polish, super clean car. Only 56,000 miles, I think, when I sold it on the car. Really, really clean car, but it was 2009. So we are talking 15 years old now, even though the mileage is though the car was 15 years old. Lady was driving around for a bit and um, it started overheating and she had the common sense to pull over rather than carry on. Luckily, she lives close to one of our viewers, Wayne, who owns Wayne's Wheels, um, who's uh, yeah, a chap I've known for a while since I started the channel. He's got his own little car business. I've been telling him to do his, his own videos for ages. He's got his own little car business fairly locally and he recovered the car for her and fitted a new radiator and billed me. And we've got a bill here for £352 on that one. So he uh, recovered it, 70 quid is you know very fair price for going and recovering the car. He uh, got the radiator in and fitted it. He isn't VAT registered though, so I can't claim any VAT back off that. So three, um, I normally don't work with anyone who isn't VAT registered, but Wayne is an exception because he's a good geezer. Um, £352 off the sale of that car, which I think is about around about 10% of the value of the vehicle, if I remember rightly. Uh, so that's quite a big chunk, quite a big chunk of the, of the value of that car. Bear in mind that dealers normally would make 10 to 15% on a used vehicle net before what we used to call in the old uh, corporate world EBITDA, before we pay our taxes on it. So we'd still have to pay income tax on it. So we make about 10 to 15% on the car after paying VAT. Then you're going to have some other overheads to come out. You're going to have your tax to come out on it at all. So that's quite substantial on the car of that value. And again, I think I send that out with... I might be a bit generous now with three months warranty. Realistically, I think, comment down below, I think on a car that aged 30 days is more than enough. Uh, so I did... So I've potential, you know, potentially could have other bills off that car as well still. And again, I don't think a radiator on a 14-year-old car, um, even with only 60,000 miles on it, makes it a bad car. As you can see now, my point about it being a consumer item, like a standard item on vehicles, that once they get past a certain age start to, to wear out, I think you can see that is fair. And that's, you know, a lot of people go, oh, I said to you earlier, warranties aren't worth the paper they, they're written on. Why a warranty, a third-party warranty, on a car sort of 10 years old plus wouldn't cover a radiator is because... As you can clearly see, radius is a fairly standard maintenance item for a vehicle of that age. I'm sure we'll have some idiots in the comments down below saying otherwise, but let's, let's stop and be realistic about it. The reason that every car parts place in the UK has shells stacked full of radiators is because they're a standard wear and tear item for a used vehicle. So on to our return. I'll point to the Fiat because it's, a Fiat, it's the Fiat 500. So we sold this Fiat 500. If you remember, it was a challenge car from one of the auction videos where we went and bought a few cars at auction and I challenged some other guys about selling it. Well, I sold my car first, the Fiat 500, um, because Fiat 500s are good sellers. So 2009 with about, what was it on it? 40, under 50,000 miles on it. So m nice low mileage, fairly clean car for the age as well. So we sold that to, again, I think it's someone who watches the channel. Uh, it was for his daughter as her first car. So we got it all MOT, cost me a lot on MOT. I think I dropped it down to the Moors guys and I, I do think they went a bit overboard on it. I said, get, I came with a long MOT, I said, can you get the advisories off? Now the advisories were for things like shop absorbers having some surface corrosion on them and the exhaust system having um, some corrosion on it. Uh, now normally it's the outer shield on the exhaust 
and you just tear that off and it's okay. But they actually ended up replacing the whole exhaust system. They replaced the shock absorbers, they put some tires on it, and then we hit a pot and had to put another tire on it. So I ended up spending an awful lot on prep on that car and it went out with all the advisories resolved. So I've got all the invoices for that. I gave a copy of the invoice to the customer with all the advisories resolved it. We just did an oil and filter change on it before it went out. So prep was quite expensive and the margin was fairly slim. Well, the car went out the door, the customer had it for a little while, um, maybe a couple of weeks or so and said there's only one issue with it every now and then when you turn the car on the power steering doesn't kick in instantly so we thought this was probably a power related situation as in if there isn't i think if there isn't 13 volts go into the power steering pretty much straight away it won't kick in fully so if there's a drop in voltage at all that'll cause that dropped it down to the moors guys and the moors guys uh said that they found that the earth strap underneath the battery was very worn so they put a new earth strap on the car so all good to go on that front gave the car back to the customer and um, but unfortunately a few days later the customer said the same thing was happening so it seems that they hadn't hadn't nailed what that fault was so it was arranged for it to be dropped down to moors again it's all within the first month within the first 30 days so drop the car back down to moors again and um, they've had a look over it and uh, they were kind of trying to work out what the problem is in it. And, and I suggested it would be the alternator because I had this before. There's like a, now you guys are in the know, there's like a diode on the Fiat 500 alternators, which is quite common for failing, it throws up quite a lot of problems. So I thought it was alternator. Anyway, the customer messaged me after three or four days, I think it was, and unfortunately, Moore's hadn't got back to them with what was going on with the car. And at this point, they said they'd lost sort of some faith in the vehicle. Um, because they'd only been able to use it for a few days since they'd owned the vehicle. So I think within 30 days, they'd only had the vehicle for 14 days or something like that. And I said, well, your options are, I said, you know, obviously we'll get this fix done for you. You can have the car back and I would have extended the warranty out for the lost period of time. I said, or obviously because the same fault has happened twice in a row, you can have a refund. Under UK law, uh, if the vehicle develops a problem, the dealer is allowed the opportunity to fix it if it's outside of 30 days, within 30 days, you can actually return the car straight away for any fault within the first 30 days. But after 30 days, if there is a fault with the vehicle, the dealer has an opportunity to fix it, but then you have one opportunity to fix it. So this is between um, 30 days and six months. Then you have one opportunity to fix the vehicle. If that fix doesn't work, you can actually get your money back. Now, there can be a deduction for mileage. There can be a deduction for any, any a damage you've done to the vehicle. There can be a deduction for... Um, the revaluting of the vehicle so it's not that you get 100% of your money back it depends how many miles you put on the car but yeah if the same fault so just be clear about this it doesn't mean if there's a second fault you can get your money back if it's the same fault uh, that comes up again then you can ask for your money back so I said so you're entitled to have your money back I said the only thing I would caution you is if you have your money back and go buy a car you know 2009 Fiat 500 similar sort of age these things are very common. The alternators are very common fault with them. There's other faults to flag up with them. At least at the moment, I'm paying the bill for it. Whereas if you'd had no issues with the car at all for three months or so, I think I gave a three-month warranty on it, which is probably a bit over generous again for 2009. It's 15 years old. Um, if if you have the same fault again you know, four or five months down the road, someone else will be paying for it. And it's quite like you would have that fault because it's a very common thing with those cars. Anyway, they decided they'd like to have a refund because what they think they're going to do is put another couple of thousand pounds on top um, and get something newer because their argument was, I'd pointed out to them, if they buy the same sort of similar age car, they might have the same problem. So they've decided to actually just spend more money and go up. Unfortunately, I have, they do love the Fiat 500. I haven't got a Fiat 500 that much newer for them at the moment, so they won't be spending that money with me. So I did a refund. Now, I worked out the mileage on the vehicle and they'd... The difference was £125 at 25p a mile. I only charge 25p a mile. I know some people charge 45p a mile. I did a calculation of how many miles it added, and it was only going to be a difference of £125. And in my mind, for the to in and fro and back to Moors, dropping the car off because they live down at Taunton, I didn't feel comfortable charging £125. So I just actually refunded them in full. And I've left the Fiat 500 down with Moors, getting the alternators fitted to it. I think they've got two different ones because they weren't quite sure which, which one to go for. And we'll leave it down there until we know 100% that it's fixed and then we'll put it up for sale. Like I say, it's a nice low mileage fit for run. Only issue being, 
in the time that's gone past since the car, car was purchased, obviously the market's been quite slow for everyone. So the prices of cars have dropped. So I very much doubt it would be worth the same as it was when I first sold it. I had very small margin in it and all that margin is probably gonna go into the repair. So that might end up being at best a break even vehicle. But I do think again, comment down below, when I resell it being 2009, even though it's only 50,000 miles, I might only put a 30 day warranty on it because it's, <laughs> again, at that age, there's things that are going to need re replacing on it. There's just, you know, you've got to accept that when you buy a vehicle that age, you're not buying a brand new vehicle and you are going to be taking on some maintenance. Just to highlight this point, let me show you that it's coming, something that's come through to me regarding UK law and used vehicles and what is considered fair maintenance. Excuse us from in the background, it's that time again. So this email has come through from Logistics and that's the company that I do my own warranties through. They provide me with a legal document for my warranties. And this one was regarding how... Um, Finance companies are trying to claim about durability on used cars as a reason to uh, to get to, to get their money back on. And like I say, I've done previous videos on how cheeky finance companies are about trying to dump cars back on dealers. But the point it was making here um, was that there is plenty of sound legal authority. It makes it clear a buyer of a used vehicle must expect that faults will develop sooner or later. Very interesting. Um which remains good law despite the provisions of the Consumer Rights Act. So it's saying that despite the Consumer Rights Act, there is plenty of legal authority that makes it clear that the buyer of a used vehicle must expect the faults will develop sooner or later. It, says, it puts a case here, that a case of Thane versus Anisland Trade Centre. The court found in relation to durability and satisfactory quality that people who buy second-hand cars get them at less than the original price in large part because second-hand cars have attached to them an increased risk of expensive repairs. And it says there, on that basis alone, buyers of second-hand cars must accept the risks inevitably attached to such cars due to wear of components with uncertain failure times, and as a result, often pay a much reduced price from its price when new. It says here as well that, Courts have consistently found that even a negligible degree of durability may not represent unsatisfactory quality when a car is old and heavily used. Durability in these circumstances is purely a matter of luck and not something any reasonable person would expect or demand. So what it's saying there is that even if something only lasts a very short period of time after the purchase of the vehicle... If it is a very old car and a very heavily used car, then it isn't fair to expect or demand that somebody should be doing the fix for you. So what it's saying there is, despite the Consumer Rights Act, which is a very generic act that applies to all goods you buy, under law, there it is accepted that when you buy a used vehicle at a heavily reduced price from new, there is a major compromise with it. So we do have another Yeti in. This has come from a subscriber. This is a 2013 Yeti with 80,000 miles on it. It has a full main dealer service history. It is the 4x4 version and it has the desirable dsg gearbox you can see from the coke cans i've run it around for a couple of days myself to make sure i'm happy with everything things like the um cold start you want to try on a diesel make sure there's no dual mass flywheel rattle now these two liter tdis are renowned for being pretty darn bulletproof and there's plenty of places where you see them done over 300,000 miles especially if they have as good a service history as this has which includes the all-important services on the dsg gearbox and what is it the um I forget, Haldex as well. You want to make sure those services have been done. So everything is going for this car in terms of the way it's been cared for, but it is 80,000 miles and it is now 11 years old. Now, one of the problems you run into something like this is they hold their value quite well. So this is still quite a valuable car. Well, in terms of my sort of industry, it's quite a valuable car. I think exactly what, probably in the, in the sevens to eight kind of range, I would say. Now, obviously, if this was a 2013 sort of Fiesta or something, it might be only worth three grand or so. But the trouble is, if they're both 80,000 miles and they're both 11 years old, they've both been out on the road for the same period of time, done the same mileage. The wear and tear is the same. So the fact that one is £3,000 and one is seven or £8,000 doesn't make any difference. Value of the car makes no difference. A lot of people argue toss with this. But value of the car makes no difference. If this was a £30,000 vehicle, there's no reason that you'd be able to warranty it any more than a £3,000 car. Because at the end of the day, if the mileage and the age are the same, like I say, the wear and tear would be the same.
that's why of course it's possible to go and spend 20 30 grand on a um on a classic car and can't have no warranties included at all because it's just got to that age now but no reasonable person could expect anyone to know what the next component might be that fails on it so i would be interested if you dropped in the comments what warranty you'd expect on this car let's just have a little experiment what kind of warranty would you expect in this car now also let's discuss the point of not all warranties are equal as well so i've had grief before for saying that i've put a warranty on a car for three months but it doesn't cover xyz i think it's entirely fair for a warranty to cover different components based on the age of the vehicle so i'd more than happy to put say three months warranty on that vehicle if it was to cover the engine the gearbox the differential all the things that are going to stop you from being able to drive the car would i want to cover something like the body control unit the ecu yes yeah, so body control unit ecu gearbox engine clutch those kind of things yeah like i'd accept that you'd want them to last for a sort of minimum of three months but would i cover things like electric windows electric mirrors air conditioning no radiator perhaps you might say radiator perhaps would it be fair to say that i might not want to cover those things because of the age and the mileage vehicle i think that's entirely fair i don't think all warranties have to be equal there's a confusion where you say if you put three months on a car that it should cover everything but if i put three months on a 2018 car with 40,000 miles on i'd say fair enough it should probably cover everything but if i do it on a 2013 car 11 years old with 80,000 miles and I think it's fair to say that some things might be excluded. So there's a little experiment. Get into the comments down below and say if you're buying that vehicle, how long a warranty would you expect and what would you expect it to cover? And we'll see, um, we'll see what the, the average expectation of the consumer is. So final warranty claim to update you on, again, apologies for the stream in the background, is the Ford C-Max. The Ford C-Max, was it 2017, I think it was, with about 50,000 miles on? Customer said that occasionally the clutch pedal was sticking down. He had to lift it back up again with his foot. So he brought the car in, dropped it down to Moores, who did a check on it, and found there was no leaking out of the bell housing at all. So then I asked him to pressurize the system and leave it for at least 24 hours. I think I left it for 48 in the end, and see if the pedal moved at all. Um, if you pressurize the system and then see if the pedal moves, then you'll know if you're getting a leak somewhere. They did that and they didn't get any leaks. So, this, so we came to the conclusion it was possibly just the spring behind the pedal. I lent him the Suzuki Swift that's kicking around here somewhere. I lent him the Suzuki Swift as a loan car while it was in um, and explained to him it would take us a few days to do this checks to see if we're losing pressure or not. And I explained to him as well that if we couldn't see leak water come, um, leak fluid coming out of the bell housing where the concentric slave center inside the bell housing would leak and then come down out of the bell housing if we couldn't see that and the system didn't lose any pressure then it was unlikely to do, to be an issue with that anyway so we we came to the conclusion it was the spring possibly behind the pedal a few of you suggested that and they were quite cheap to buy so i ordered two online to see which one I got here the fastest we've installed that and we've let the customer leave now the the spring i think costs maybe like 15 pounds i think and i think the guys charged me for about 30 quid a fitting so that one wasn't a massive amount of money but whether it's fixed the problem or not only time is going to tell isn't it the customer's taking the car away they'll drive it around for a bit and we'll see what happens anyway i hope you enjoyed what that little update of real life car trading is all about like I say showing you all the background stuff as well as value all your comments and like i say I'll, I'll try and reply to as many as i can now what I need to do is get this Yeti all cleaned up and photographed. I think I want to give it a machine polish as well, so it's going to take a little while. And so I'll join the guys streaming out in the sunshine and get on with that. Before I do, just a quick reminder that we still have the raffle on going for the Mercedes CL over here. It will get noisy when I get over it. I promised to show you the inside of it on the last video because the interior is beautiful. I'm actually going to move it around a little bit because it's been sat here for a couple of weeks now. I need to make sure that we keep the battery charged up. So we've got the raffle going at two pound a ticket for this Mercedes CL. It's got a brand new MOT on it and freshly serviced. It is in fantastic condition. We're giving a proportion of the proceeds to Ability FC, which is the football club in Barnsville that said they needed support um, because they are quite short on funds to um, keep running their football team for like say that's for people with special needs and learning disabilities so we're raffling off the CL for them now the winner can either choose the car or they can choose to have four thousand pound cash either way this has hit its minimum ticket sales it has hit its minimum ticket sales so it will go uh, go to the winner or the winner will get the four thousand pound cash so the interior on it is also absolutely fantastic. I've never seen a seat with more electric buttons than this car has. Look at all the ones there, all the ones up here. It is absolutely fantastic. We did a brand new ABC pump on it as part of the preparation. 
There's an earlier video of me test driving it around. Is the battery flat? I suspect it probably is, to be perfectly frank, from sitting here around this long. We'll see. See all the steering wheel and all that. 95,000 miles, so not a lot for 2003. Look at that, she started straight up. The flashing you're seeing is just the phone, by the way, it's not actually flashing on the dash. It is proper all old school luxury in here. Drives fantastic, like I say, if you want to see that, have a look at the earlier video. But this will go to someone, I say tickets are only two pound. Or as I said, you can choose £4,000 cash. And I will be, for the winner, if they do want to have the car, I will be taxing it for a year for you as well. The tax isn't too bad on this one. It's only 360 because it's pre the next cutoff where it went to £700. So it's, that's why it's a particularly good one to have. Anyway, I'm going to go for a little spin and then make sure the brakes are staying nice and free. Maybe give her a little wash off. I'll put a link to the raffle in the description down below. And I am doing a special offer. If you look on screen now, I'm doing a special offer for tickets. But hurry, that will only run for 48 hours. So make sure you grab that, take advantage of that offer there. As always, massive thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.